Good morning, Seals Creek. Good morning. This is the day that the Lord has made. I was glad when they said unto us, let us go into the house of the Lord where we can worship as we should enter into his gates with thanksgiving and into his courts with praise. Give thanks to him and bless his holy name. For the Lord is good yeah. all the time. God is good yeah. all the time. Yeah. For the Lord is good yeah. all the time. Yeah. Let us reverence God by invoking his presence. Dear Lord, we come to you today as humble as we know how. Thank you for the many blessings that you've already bestowed upon us. And thank you in advance for what's ahead. Eyes have not seen, ears have not heard the wonderful works that you're about to bless us with today. So Lord, we invite you. We invite you to have your way. Let the spirit rain down. Shekinah glory in this place. Take your shoes off if you need to. Loose your shackles if you need to. All we want to do is let God have his way in today's service. Lord, we ask this and all the blessings. In your name we pray. Amen. Amen. Good morning, good morning, good morning. Good morning. Today is Women's Day, and our Women's Day theme is Women with a Person. So we are so excited to be celebrating our women today, as our theme for the year is Women with a Purpose. And the definition of a purpose is the reason for which something is done or created, or for which something exists. I don't know about you, but I'm so glad that God created the woman. Today, we will rejoice in our purpose. And it says in Psalm 68, 11, the Lord gives the word. The woman who announced the news are a great host. So there it says right there, we are great. And that's something to be glad about. So I don't know about you. I'm so excited that we get to honor and celebrate our wonderful women of Seals Creek. Um, and that we are going to be blessed by a word from Pastor Michelle this morning, um, who's definitely going to bring us a word. So at this time, we are going to yield to the announcements. Um, I just want to remind everybody that the annual CK Cornelius program will be held today, following service at 3 p.m. Food will be available for purchase. So you don't have to go anywhere. Um, Sandra. Cornelius Little will be providing food, so you can head on downstairs, um, and she will be um, providing food for today's afternoon service. Oh, and there's a raffle. Would you like to speak to that, brother? I don't know about the raffle. <laughs> Praise the Lord, church. We are expecting a huge crowd today. As you see, the sign says outside, but it's going to be indoors. If you notice, the weather is supposed to be 80 degrees, but the wind's going to be 22 miles per hour wind. So the service will be held outside, and we're expecting a great crowd today. Inside, inside. inside excuse me, excuse me. And we're going to give away some cash today. We're going to give away some cash. But in order to get the cash, you've got to have a ticket. We're going to give away $100. We're going to give away $50, and we're going to give away $25. I have, the, I have the tickets, and if you'd like to get one, they're like, $2 per ticket, or you can get 3 for $5, or you can get 6 for $12. So just see me after service, and I'll be more glad to make that exchange for you. And as Pastor has already told you, when we do this project every year, the money comes right back to the church. There's no individual is going to benefit. The church and the community is going to benefit from this. This is just something we do every year. have done it for this is the 42nd year in honor of my dad, and we've always had great support from the church, and I appreciate that. We're grateful to have a Seals Creek family that puts their arms around this program. Amen. And, and Amen. I thank you for that. I thank you for that. So we're expecting, uh, I've had calls out of Atlanta. I've had calls coming from the northern part of the, uh, uh, western part of the state. Tell me they'll be here today, and I, I believe they'll be here. <laughs> so we got five exciting gospel groups. You like gospel singing, oh, God, you're going to be in for a treat. We have New Direction out of Lancaster, South Carolina. We got uh, Ray and the Gospel Keys out of Charlotte, North Carolina. They've been here before. We have the, the Mighty Pilgrim Airs. We have our very own, the Anointed Vessels. We have the uh, Messengers of Christ from Cleveland, North Carolina. We also have a rapper. 
we have a rapper that's going to come on and he does gospel rap. So we have a, a day full of excitement and spiritual, spiritual entertainment. So uh, many people have already supported us. I've, I've received several donations from a lot of people already, and I thank you for that. And we're just asking if you're able to do, give us a $25 donation, and God will, and we will be very pleased with that. Amen. 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 Thank you so much, Brother Stacy. Um, another announcement that was also sent out via email, but I'm just going to lift it up, is the Western North Carolina Conference. Men's Booster Ministry will be having a conference on April the 20th at Golan Metropolitan AME Zion Church that is located in Winston-Salem, North Carolina. The keynote speaker will be D. Reverend Daryl Scott, Jr., so please refer to the flyer that was sent out via email last week for further details. Um, at this time, I will yield to the pastor if he has any additional announcements. Good to see you, amen. amen. Thank God for a wonderful job Stephanie's doing, amen. amen. We're looking forward to a blessed word. I do have one announcement um, on on Tuesday the 16th. Tuesday the 16th, the Salisbury District will be having a Yakum revival. A Yakum revival at Morris Chapel at 7 o'clock. Your pastor has been asked to speak um, at that revival. Amen. Amen. Um, we do know that's a school night, so we understand. Um, but if you can and are available, um, your pastor would be gracious to be able to see you uh, at Morris Chapel at 7 o'clock on Tuesday. Amen. So much, Pastor. So please govern yourself accordingly to the announcements that you've just heard. Um, so at this time, we're going to actually get everyone involved. So if you could rise and stand, we're going to sing Pass Me Not as a congregational hymn.
So please remain standing. And at this time, we will reaffirm our faith by reciting the, the Apostles' Creed, and it begins. You may be seated. At this time, we will have Sister Galanda Graham come up and read the scripture. Good morning, church. Good morning. This morning's scripture will be coming from Esther, fourth chapter, <clears throat> six through the sixteenth verses. <clears throat> Habakkuk went out to Mordecai in the open square of the city in front of the king's gate. And Mordecai told him all that had happened to him and the exact sum of money that Haman had promised to pay into the king's treasures for the destruction of the Jews. Mordecai also gave him a copy of the written decree issued in Susa for their destruction excuse me, Susa for their destruction, that he might show it to Esther and explain it to her and charge her to go to the king to make supplication to him and entreat him for her people. And Hathcock went and told Esther what Mordecai had said. Then Esther spoke to Hathcock and gave him a message for Mordecai, saying, All the king's servants and the people of the king's provinces, Know that if any man or woman go to the king inside the inner court without being called, there is but one law. All are alike and are to be put to death, except the one to whom the king holds out the golden scepter, that he may live. And I have not been called to come in to the king these thirty days. And they told Mordecai what Esther had said. Then Mordecai told them to return answer to Esther. Think not that in the king's palace you will escape any more than all the other Jews. For if you keep silence at such a time as this, relief and deliverance will rise for the Jews from another quarter, but you and your father's house will perish. And who knows whether you have not come to the kingdom for such a time as this? Then Esther told them to reply to Mordecai, Go, gather all the Jews to the found in Susa, and hold a fast on my behalf, neither eat nor drink for three days, night or day. I and my maids will also fast as you do. Then I will go to the king, though it is against the law, and if I perish, I perish. I have read Esther, the fourth chapter, six through the 16th verses, and may God add a blessing to the reading of his red word. So we've come to the point in the service where everybody can have a communication with God, and that is the time of the prayer. At this time, we would like to ask Sister Mary Kelly to come up and lead us to the altar. Oh God, your deliverance, Lord, your conquerors, oh God, we thank you. 
Thank you, Lord. Oh, God, we thank you for the pastor. Thank you, Lord. Continue strengthening him. First lady. Oh, God, the mother and father. We thank you. We thank you for everything you have done. Oh, God, we're looking for greater things this day. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Anoint, oh, God, the pastor. Oh, God, this is the hour for the word, oh, God, that you have in store for us this morning. Oh, God, we thank you. Strengthen us. Let us down in the depths of your word. Hallelujah. Oh, God, let your account of glory. Sister Kelly for that powerful prayer and in times like this if we've never needed God we need him more than now every time you turn on the TV something somebody's getting shot our government God bless it but we have one that holds all power in his hand and that's God so don't ever get discouraged just look up I put a prayer in to the man who can answer all prayers. Yes. At this time, we were going to lead to our first lady, Dr. Minica Brady, to give us the introduction of our speaker. After that, we will hear a song from the wonderful choir. And then the next voice you will hear is that of Pastor Michelle Irby. Amen. Can you hear me now? Yes. Okay. Amen. Good morning. Good morning. I said that you look beautiful, so if you didn't hear me, hopefully you hear it now. You do in your rainbow. I was wondering why everybody was looking at me like blank eyed. Thank you, Stephanie. Um, I have the task of introducing our speaker for this morning, and it is my absolute honor to do so. Um, some people, when they walk into a room, they have a presence, Amen. right? And when they are there, you know it. And I think many of us, if not all of us, would agree that since Pastor Michelle has been joining us, we have been grateful for her presence. Um, I've shared this with her personally, and sometimes I share it with her, and she's like, oh, what do you mean? But she is one of those people who, as she shines her light, she unconsciously gives others permission to do the same. So it's for nothing else but on behalf of myself. I thank you for your presence in this place. And I, like everyone else, look forward to what you will bring today. But I do have a bio, so I want to read that for you. She is a native of Maryland. She is a retired United States Air Force service member. Amen. Amen. She is a speaker, a coach, a trainer, a lady of many talents, but I am stepping over to the bio to give that to you. All right, Pastor Michelle has such a heart for the people of God and her passion is to see others healed and whole. She recognizes that everyone does not embrace their scars, frailties, disappointments, and such in the same manner. Thus, she employs the grace of God to partner with individuals so they can truly understand the truth of Psalm 139, 14, which declares, I will praise thee for I am fearfully and wonderfully made Marvelous are thy works, and that my soul knoweth right well. Far too often, the enemy will use our missteps, mistakes, and mishaps to falsely convince us that God does not want us, that God cannot use us, and that we are too messed up to change, be accepted, and ultimately make an impact in the earth for the glory of God. Pastor Michelle is a proponent of dispelling the lies of the enemy so that people can see their worth no matter what appears to be broken in them and in their lives. 
She encourages individuals to put feet to faith and walk it out through the fire, the pain, the rejection, and find the unconditional love, mercy, and grace of God that is available to meet them right where they are. Amen. So after a selection from the choir, the next voice you will hear will be none other than that of Pastor Michelle Irvin.
Jesus. Praise the Lord, Seals Creek. Praise the Lord, Seals Creek. God knows, God knows my soul is happy. Glory to God, glory to God. Thank you, first of all, Lady Stephanie and your team for considering this one to stand before God's people. God knows I know who she is, amen. Hallelujah. Thank you, Pastor and First Lady, for lending the sacred desk to me on today. We'll see what the Lord has to say to us and through us on today. God knows um, I was just sharing with uh, Lady Minnick. I keep calling her Pastor. I don't know. That might be prophetic. I don't know. But uh, she refuses. She refuses. But uh, I was telling her I haven't preached in a year. And so I had to step out there and say yes. Had to say, had to say yes, and so you all pray with me Amen. as um, we're going to kick the devil in the teeth today. Amen. 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 As it regards to uh, anxiety. Amen. Amen. So Amen. we're going to trust God, and um, thank you, choir, for just setting the stage. I think the water's been troubled <laughs> right up and right up and through here, right up and and through here. Amen. Amen. I'm going to try not to be before you long, but if I can just get this out of my spirit for just a moment, um, Brother Jay. <clears throat> Excuse me. I need the oil. I need the Let them hear and see none of me but all of you. We thank you in advance for the results of your word. It is in Jesus' name that I pray. Amen. 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 Hallelujah. Hallelujah. You have already heard the text. Stop it, Auntie. You have already heard the text. Read in your hearing. We're going to focus on verse 14 which reads, and I'm reading from the New Living Translation, if you keep quiet at this time, deliverance and relief for the Jews will arise from some other place, but you and your relatives will die. Who knows if perhaps you were made queen for such a time as this. The King James Version says, who knoweth whether thou art come to the kingdom for such 
a time as this. At the time of this writing, at the time of this particular text, Mordecai had learned about the plan of Haman. You have to go back and read the first three chapters. He had learned about the, Haman, the, um, the plan of Haman to destroy the Jews. Why? Because Mordecai refused to ab abide by the command to bow. Whenever Mordecai came in, whenever Haman came into the room, the expectation was that he was supposed to bow. Everyone was supposed to bow before Haman. And Mordecai says, no go. I'm not doing it. Can I be myself, y'all? I'm not doing it. And so he decides, Haman decides he wants to use his power to punish everybody over one man's choice to disobey. We cannot punish everybody over one person's disregard. Let that rest in your spirit. Let that rest in your spirit. Some of us in here have cut everybody off at the hand of one person's mishaps and missteps. We can't do that. We can't be like Haman. He wants to punish the whole Jewish nation because Mordecai decides not to bow. And so we learn that Mordecai is Esther's cousin. He adopts her when she was younger. His pa her parents had passed away. And one of the things he told her was, do not tell them your real name. Don't tell them that your Jewish name is Hadassah. Not because you're ashamed of who we are, but don't tell them because we're trying to protect the nation. And he didn't know, he didn't want her to let them know about the country. And I asked myself, I said, had he known about what was being planned for the Jews in advance? Did he know something that made him say, keep your real identity to yourself? Ultimately, Esther fell in alignment. So by way of a text today, I know we're talking about women of purpose. Men, you have purpose too, so include yourself in this. But my subtopic is get in alignment for the assignment. Mm, okay. Get in alignment for the assignment. Mm -hmm. So here Esther is. She falls in alignment with everything that Mordecai says to her. And alignment hit my spirit. I was driving and I was thinking about alignments because, you know, I think about sermons, different, different things. HGTV gives me a sermon. You know, I, can, I, I did a sermon on house hunters just, you know. <laughs> it was a three-part series. I gave the book to pastor. But I was thinking about an alignment. And, you know, when you need an alignment, it's because something is off. Your, 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 your vehicle is not driving straight. There's an issue with you not going in the, in the right direction on the same path. And so when I looked it up, it says an alignment is, a, is you think automatically of a front of alignment. It's uh, the car needs the, his tracking readjusted. It ensures that your car suspension components are properly positioned at the correct angle and adjusted to maintain performance and driving safely. And alignment ultimately reduces the need for constant correction. It reduces the need for constant correction. <laughs> Woo, glory to God. Being out of alignment, your car can drift. You let go of the steering wheel, you feel it pull to one side, right? So when we're talking about being in alignment, oftentimes we're out of alignment and we start to drift. We find ourselves being drifted, pulled to the opposite side, pulled away from God's promises, pulled away from God's peace, pulled away from God's purpose, pulled away from his protection and his power. We drift when we're out of alignment. <laughs> ah, so when we consider Esther's alignment, it includes her purification season. Now, she, she, she was pulled into this. Now, I don't know if she asked for it. I don't know if she desired it. I don't know if there's some objection to it. But she was pulled into this year-long process of purification. Uh -huh, uh -huh. Six months in oils and myrrhs. Six months in, in, in perfume. Six months of being, you know, pripped and proper. I mean, I, I don't know about you, but I want to choose my own husband. Oh, yeah, <laughs> I'm going to be bathing me for a year to give me somebody I didn't ask for. I'm just saying. So she went through this year-long process of purification. 
in my mind, I, this is how I think. I said, did she want this? Was this something that she desired? Did she want to just be a regular, ordinary woman? Did she say, you know what, I think I want to go to college, or maybe I want to have children, maybe I want a dog or a cat. What does she want? But it didn't matter. She fell into alignment. She ignored what she wanted, and she fell into alignment. God is saying he's preparing you for a long time. He's been telling you stuff for a long time. He's been making a way for you for a long time, but for some reason, you fail to fall into alignment. God has been shaping you. He has been pruning you. He's been pulling you. He's been chastising you. He has been lulling you. He's been wooing you. He has been chasing you and testing you and warning you, and still you refuse to fall into alignment. I heard you last week, Pastor, when you said, why do you come to church? And I'm going to add a question on top of that. I'm going to ride with that. Why are you here? What is your existence? Why are you here? Not just to come to church, not just because your name is on the road, not just because you run the camera, not just because you can sing purdy and play the instruments. Why are you here? Because you know I can lay at home. Let me stop. Let me stop. Let me fix myself. Okay. I got to remember I ain't home. Why are you here? I don't know. I'm not getting up in the morning and putting no makeup and eyebrows. Just got to put them on, ma'am. Putting on eyebrows. I don't need the eyelashes, but I got to put on eyebrows on Sunday morning. I'm not going to get up and put them on just to sit here and look like I don't care. Sit here and look like God ain't did nothing for me. You know, I, 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 don't, I don't get up and do my hair every morning so that, you know, y'all missed it. Okay. Anyway, the question becomes, why are you here? Are you here for your family? Are you here for your friends? Are you here to spectate? Are you here to participate? Why are you here? It's more than coming through the doors. Pastor, help me in here. I'm, I'm, try, I'm, trying, to, I'm trying to be nice. Why are we here? God planted us in the earth for more than just showing up. More than just showing up. For what purpose have you been deposited in the earth? Not just to come to church. Not just to put your name on the roll. Not just to say, I belong to Seals Creek. Why are you here? For what purpose? So I submit to you, alignment is not comfortable for anybody. And this right here, Pastor, say amen. This ain't comfortable. This, ma'am, sir, this is not comfortable. It's not convenient. Alignment is not for your convenience. It's not going to feel good. It's not meant to feel good. Alignment. It's, it, it messes with our agendas. A, 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 alignment causes us to say, ouch, when, you know. Alignment causes us to get rid of some friends and some associates. Alignment causes us to put, put some things down. Alignment causes us to shift some things. But the problem is we don't want to align. We, 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 we don't want to align. I remember when God called me to the ministry. You know, I, I said, God, if I cussed at you, I would, but I didn't. But he, 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 look, uh, don't let me tell the truth on myself. But the point of the matter is, he called me in 20, 2001. I ran for a whole year and a half. I said, God, you know I'm supposed to be singing. I'm supposed to be doing this. I'm supposed to be doing that. But because I failed to come into alignment, that whole year was hell. When I tell you it was hell, it was hell on wheels because I refused to come into alignment. 
Alignment takes the focus off you. Alignment gets rid of all of the excuses because, you know, we all have many. But the alignment helps us to get rid of those excuses. Alignment gets rid of our religious traditions and our rituals. Because God don't care nothing about none of that no way. He don't care if you come to church 24-7, but if your life ain't right out there, he could care less. Because he ain't thinking about your name being on that roll. He wants your name in the Lamb's Book of Life. That's what he cares about. So Esther, let's get back to Esther because, you know, I'm feeling some kind of way. Esther, Esther, she had no clue that the death of her parents was a part of her alignment. She had no clue that her adoption was a part of her alignment. She had no clue that the purification process was part of her assignment. Was it comfortable? I'm sure it wasn't. Was she irritated? Probably was she like, well, you know what, first of all, I didn't ask for none of this. But she fell into alignment. Could it be that your loss of your job causes you to get in alignment? Could it be that your health challenges are part of you getting in alignment? Could it possibly be that your wayward, hard-headed, rebellious family member is a way to pull you into Alignment. Could it possibly be that the imprisonment, whether it's figurative or literal, was part of the alignment? Could it be that the addiction and the abuse was part of the alignment? Could it be that the miscarriage was part of the alignment? Could it possibly be that the infertility was part of the alignment? Could it be, my God, that the divorce is part of the alignment. Could it be that you being a single parent be part of your alignment? Could it be that they lied on you, talked about you, misused you, and abused you? Could that be part of your alignment? Could the neglect and the, uh, and the rejection and the abandonment, could that possibly be part of the alignment, the bankruptcy? the loss of a loved one, everything you've experienced up to this point, could it possibly be part of the alignment? See, we fight the stuff that comes on in our lives, even though half of it we brought on ourselves. Let's just say that. But the point is, the things we live through, the vicissitudes of life, as they like to say, the things that we live through, could it possibly be that God is shaping you for your assignment? We kick against everything, even the things we create. Come on, lift your hands and close your eyes. I'm not going to count you. Could it possibly be that everything that you're going through right now that seems to be adverse in your eyes is part of the alignment in God's plan? Could it be, could it be, could it be, my God from Zion? You say you want to be a woman of purpose. You say you want to be a man of purpose. But what are you doing to get in alignment with that purpose? Are you stepping away from purpose because your friends don't like it? Are you stepping away from your plans because... Your, your father don't like it? Are you stepping away from purpose because your husband or your wife doesn't like it? You know, your salvation is yours. Your alignment is yours. Your walk with God is yours. Because when he calls the role, he ain't going to say Mr. and Mrs. He's going to say you. It's not, it's, it's not a package deal, sweetie. Your, your, your name on the roll ain't package deal. It's, it's individualized, customized. And so don't think that you got to hold your spouse's hand, your children's hand, your auntie's hand, your uncle's hand, because y'all going individually. So let's get that real clear. Because, you know, whether I do it or not, mama got to choose for herself. Amen. Amen. So have you stepped away from what God has told you because it didn't pan out the way you wanted it to? Because it didn't look like you wanted to? Because it didn't feel like you wanted it to? Have you stepped out of alignment with your purpose because of how it looked or it seemed? 
Alignment causes you to get out of your comfort zone, out of your traditions, out of people's opinions. Alignment causes you to get out of the optics of social media. Gets you, allow, allows you to get out of the sway of society, which tries to get you to be like the world when you're not of this world. My God. So Haman's plan to kill the Jews did not stop Esther. She understood that she had an assignment. She didn't choose it. But she understood it. And she decided, let me fall in alignment because my nation is at risk. Oh, God, I'm going to get on that in a minute. She didn't ask for it, but she aligned to it. She didn't see it coming, but she aligned to it. She felt the weight of responsibility, but she aligned to it. She perhaps felt ill-equipped, my God, right there. But she fell in alignment with it. What would have happened if Esther decided not to align? Think about that. A whole nation. What would have happened if she told Mordecai to go kick rocks? What would have happened? What would have happened? What's not happening because you refuse to align? Not just in your life, but in the lives of others. Your alignment affects more than just you. Your alignment is not just for you. Your alignment is not just for Seals Creek. Your alignment has had somebody else's healing attached to it. Your alignment has somebody's deliverance attached to it. Your alignment has somebody else's well-being, their, 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 well, their, their mental health. This is not just about you. We don't get saved just for us. We get saved that we might win others to him. But when you walk in misalignment, you mess up the lineup. When you walk in misalignment, you walk, you mess up the lineup. What is God trying to do? Not saying we can mess his plans up, but we can create delays, and we can create detours, and we can create denials, all because we refuse to get an alignment. Ah. We are living epistles, read of men. But that only happens when we're in aligned epistles. Are we lining up with the word of God so that the word can be planted and watered and eventually increase be given by God? Stop boxing God in. Stop boxing God in. God is not going to look like you th think he looks. He's going to look like white folk. He's going to look like tattooed folk. He's going to look like crooked folk. He's going to look like people coming out of the, out of the jail. He's going to look like people who got uh, swastikas on their face. He's not going to look like you want them to look. Heaven ain't going to be black folk only. Sunday is the most segregated day of the week. You got the blacks over here, the whites over here, the contemporary over there, the Baptists over there. Why? God said nothing about segregation. Stop boxing God in. He can only work when we allow him to work. But we got to get out of the way. God knew um, Haman's plan, but he also had his own. So don't say you're a woman of purpose or a man of purpose and you won't get in alignment. Don't say you're following God and you won't get in alignment. Don't say you're busy. I'm busy. I got things to do. I'm ushering. But you're out of alignment. You counting money and you're out of alignment. You running cameras and you're out of alignment. I'm going to go with you, Pastor. Amen, lights. <laughs> Amen, walls. <laughs> Amen, rugs and carpets. <laughs> How can you?
you say that you're following the plan of God and you are blatantly out of alignment with all your excuses, none of which God cares about. The Bible says in Ecclesiastes 9, whatsoever your hand findeth to do, do it with all of your might. For there is no work, nor device, nor knowledge or wisdom in the grave. John chapter four, 9 and verse 4 says, I must work the works of him that sent me while it is day. The night cometh when no man can work. Why are you here? Why are you here? Pastor and I, we talked about this, that we have an affinity for this, this sermon that Pastor T.D. J- Bishop T.D. Jakes preaches. Show me where to put your hands. I still haven't found it ever since then. Where has God told you to put your hands? Not just the keyboard. Where else can you put your hands, Trey? Where else can you put your hands besides on the, the slides? And not, not memorizing it, but where else can you put your hands? Where has God asked you to put your hands other than singing so beautifully? On the bass. Where has God told you to put your hands and you refuse to do it? Because you're comfortable. Because be, 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 because because it because it feels because it feels it feels right. Where, where has he told you to put your hands? There is more to it than just doing it because it's comfortable or you know how to do it. God wants you to stretch your imagination so he can do what he needs to do. God needs you to put your hands somewhere unfamiliar so that he can get the glory. This is not about you. It's not about your Glory, it's not about what you think people are going to say and believe. and all. It's, No, 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 no. One of my favorite things I say is how you feel about me is none of my business. And what I do is God's business. So where are you going to put your hands? Your walk is misaligned. Your talk is misaligned. Your attitude is misaligned. Your, 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 your desires are misaligned. Your intentions and your motives are misaligned. Where are you going to put your hands? So that God gets the glory, not you. You already know that you, there's something you need to do. You already know it. You already know what it is. You are misaligned. You, you, God, God has already told you that you're a prayer warrior. What you going to do with it? God has already told you you know how to work with the youth. What you going to do with it? God has already told you that you know how to get, rally the folks and put together a plan. What are you going to do with it? God has already told you you're an event planner, but what are you going to do with it? God has already told you that the people up the street, round the corner, down the block, need to hear the word. What are you going to do with it? Out of alignment. Completely out of alignment because you're not comfortable. Completely out of alignment because that ain't your lane. Completely out of alignment because that's somebody else's job. But God told you to do it. What is your assignment? What is your assignment? If you don't know, you need to be right here. Asking God for clarity. Asking God for direction. Asking God, what, what is it? I know I was born in this earth for something more than going on a job nine to five and coming home, going to church, and rinse and repeat. What am I here for? Mordecai heard of the fate of his people, and he sent a message to Esther. And he said, if you keep quiet, it's going to hurt our nation. If you keep quiet about what God has told you to do, it's going to hurt a nation. It's going to hurt a generation. It's going to kill a legacy. What are you doing? What are you keeping quiet about? That God has already emphatically told you this is what you have been assigned to do. We got three things, and I'm going to get out the way. Pastor Brady, I know you have given charges to people. 
from the heart of God, not from you. I know that you have given some instances where you've given people opportunity to do and to say and to expand and to grow and to reach. I know you have. Fell flat. But we're going to take three lessons from Esther and I'm going to get out your way. The first thing Esther did was she listened. She heard the wails of, of Mordecai, but she even listened to him way before then. She listened to him when she was a child. And she, she didn't use her, her, um, her uh, Jewish name. So she listened all along. She understood the power of listening, not just hearing. There is a difference. Because I can hear all day long. But if I don't hear your heart through the spirit of God, we're not in, we're not in sync. She listened. She had been listening. Is God saying something to you and you refuse to listen? Is he talking to you about movement? Is he talking to you about methods? Is he talking to you about where to go, who to go, to whom to go? We don't even ask the question, God, who should I talk to today? Who should I minister to today? We, we stick to the same old folks, Bubba. That's what we do because I'm familiar with you. You know, I'm going to talk to you. I'm not going to go outside my comfort zone and talk to somebody else. But you got to entertain strangers. We, we familiar with what's in here. But there's a whole world out there that's dying. Literally dying without Jesus Christ. Because we won't listen to what God is asking us to do. His promptings, his warnings. Psalm 78 and 1 says, oh, my people, listen to my instructions. Open your ears to what I am saying. Are we cupping our ears? Are we turning a deaf ear to God? Are we thinking that because we don't, that we don't do it that he still didn't say it? He still said it. Whether you do it or not, he still said it. And we are responsible for what God tells us to do. We're held accountable for what God tells us to do. Had I kept running, lo these, I don't know how many, what year is this? I don't know what year this is. 20 years ago, had I not leaned into what God was saying, where would my life be? I'm not saying it's been a, a crystal stare, as they like to say. But it's been better because I came into alignment because I listened. Ignoring him does not mean he didn't say it. If my mother told me to do the dishes and I didn't, it don't mean she didn't say it. And it certainly don't mean she didn't mean it. <laughs> because she will certainly let me know when she reminds me did not, didn't. John 8 and 47 declares, anyone who belongs to God listens gladly to the words of God. If you say you belong to him, you should listen gladly to what he's saying. Not kicking, not fighting, not cussing, and all the things that we do. Because he still said it. And guess what? That settles it. Whether you believe it or not, God said it. Twice have I heard it. Which means I still got to do it. What is God saying to you about your assignment? Not your spouse's assignment, not your children's assignment, not your boo thing's assignment. Because, you know, we're going to step into the realm of boo thing. We, you know. It's, again, this is not a coupling thing. Your walk is individualized. What is God saying to you? Not the person on your row. I love you, but this ain't about you. We need each other, but this here ain't about you. God ain't going to get me for, for hanging out with you, try, trying to do what you tell me to do. We got to stop turning a deaf ear and get in alignment with God's assignment. Number two, Esther leaned in. I'm almost done. Leaning in means making a commitment. It says making a, a complete commitment to fully do something even when it's difficult. 
leaning in even when it's difficult. Esther leaned in. How hard did, did it have to be to know you're going in to see the king? He had not extended his golden scepter. He didn't invite you, girl. And the, the command was he going to kill you. But because she found favor. Because she found favor and she leaned into the whole commitment, not part of it. Not part of the commitment. We're not doing half of what God says because we know that partial obedience is still disobedience. If you do it halfway, it's still disobedience. So Esther knew she had to lean in. She knew she had to fully commit herself even to the extent of if I perish, let me perish. She leaned in. And she understood the gravity of the whole situation. Not just her own wants, not just her own needs, not just her own desires, not her own plans. She leaned into the entire commitment. That the, cell, that the souls of the Jews would not perish. She leaned in. She committed to the whole thing. There's a crisis arising, people. There's a crisis on the corner. There's a crisis in this room. Are you leaning in? A community is at risk. Not just this one on Bradford, but your own community. Your street. Your job. Your school district. It's at risk. All of it is at risk. Generations at risk. Souls are at risk. Because you won't lean in. I'm scared. I don't want to do that. I don't think I can. What will they say? Who cares? Is that what we is that what we doing? We really care. Do you care what I do? I asked intelligent questions. Do you care? But what is going on if you don't lean? Are you willing to lean outside of the box? Are you willing to lean towards something that's so unfamiliar that it makes your bones rattle? Are you so willing to lean in to the point where you say, you know what, if I perish, ha, let me perish. God is saying, check your lean. What you, what, what, what you leaning into? Check your lean. Are you committing your way the entire way, or are you partially leaning? Are you using a crutch? Are you leaning fully in to what God is saying to you in this hour? Not your ideas, not your flesh, not your rationale, not your cutting in them, but are you leaning? God said, check your lean. Woo, whose side are you leaning on? Leaning on the Lord's side. Bible says in Proverbs 3, trust in the Lord with all thine heart. And lean not to thine own understanding. But in all thy ways acknowledge him and he shall direct your path. Check your lean. Sonia, check your lean. Uh -huh, can, can, come on. Stand up with me. Check your lean. Check, 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 check on the mic. Check, 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 check your lean. Stephanie, I'm headed your way. You, you better, you, 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 you going to sit there or are you going to check your lean? Check your lean. Check. Yep, there we go. All right. All right. Okay. Woo. Got to check your lean. Esther understood and she leaned in. Who are you leaning on? You leaning on your associates? You leaning on your bad company? Because the Bible says the bad company corrupts. <laughs> ah, who you leaning on? You leaning on the likes on social media? I'm just saying, check your lean. Lastly, 
Let me move on. Let me move on. I'm, I'm over my time. I'm over my time. The last thing Esther did was she leaped into action. She took a leap of faith. And she said, you know what? Mordecai, I hear you. The nation of Judaism, the Jews, is at stake. I got to do something. I'm going in. I'm going all the way in. Scepter or not, I'm going in, mother. I'm going, I'm going in. And she took a leap of faith. She understood the implications. She understood the consequences. But she says, you know what? If my people are going to perish because I'm scared, if my people are going to perish because I'm disobedient, if my people are going to perish because I'm like, that ain't my lane and he ain't called me, I'm going to take the leap and I'm going to leap to action. It was a tough decision. Yes, she had favor in the king's sight, but she said, you know what? Favor don't work when I go against a decree. But because she knew that she had found favor and grace in this man's sight, she trusted that God would say, go on in, daughter. You ain't going to perish, and neither are your people. She took a leap of faith, and she invited herself into the role. She invited herself into the situation. She invited herself into the trouble. She invited herself into the unfamiliar. She invited herself into a place where nobody else was allowed. She invited herself because she trusted the God in her. She trusted the God through her. She trusted God's power. And she trusted and she understood that if I take a leap of faith, if I step out on faith, if I step out of my own way, then God will get the glory. She took a leap. She leaped into action, taller than a strong, a tall building. What's, what's Superman? She leaped over tall buildings. That's what she did. God has an assignment with your name on it. It doesn't look like you want it to look. It don't feel like you want it to feel. But God said, take a leap. He didn't make a mistake by asking you, but take a leap. God says he does not call the qualified, but he qualifies the call. So he's asking you to take a leap. God is asking you. He said many are called, but few are chosen. But will you take the leap? Ah, it's a long shot. Esther knew it, but she took a leap. They might question your ability along the way. But you still got to take a leap. Oh, they're going to talk about you regardless. They're they going to say something about you anyway. So you may as well just go ahead and take a leap. They're going to criticize you along the way, but you may as well take a leap. You may as well understand the, 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 the gravity of it all and just take a leap. It's going to feel scary. It's going to be uncomfortable. It's going to be downright ugly sometimes, but you have simply got to take a leap. Take a leap. Take a leap. They're going to laugh at you. They're going to point fingers at you. They're going to gossip about you. They're going to call you everything but a child of God, but you better take the leap. Take a leap. God said, go ahead and do it. Go ahead and do it. So it's never been done here at Seals Creek. Go ahead. Write him a proposal. Just two pages. You ain't got to put 15 out there. Just two pages. Write him a proposal. Align it with the vision. Align it with the mission. And take a leap. Start it. Is there an all-night prayer ministry here? Is there a 6.30 a.m. ministry here? You a prayer warrior? You got a prayer call going? Ah, take a leap. Mm-hmm. We got a van out there. How many of y'all done picked up this week? I saw the van. I, 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 I wonder if they pick folk up every, every Sunday. Or is it just parked out there with advertisements? Take, 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 take a leap. Take a leap. Uh-huh, uh-huh. What, what, 
What, what else is there in this house that you can be the answer to? You woke up to be the answer, not the problem. So it's time to take a leap. Don't complain about what's not happening here. You ain't doing nothing. Don't do it. Don't complain about all these empty seats. All of, the, all of these seats are a part of your assignment. If you got an alignment, we'd have two services. I'm just saying, because we're preaching to the same folk every week. And, and, and we're the new people. We're fishers of men, we're the fish. Sheep begets sheep, we're the sheep. I, I have not talked to pastor. I, I, I promise you, I don't, I don't know. Can I just sit right there and sway? I, I just, I mind my business. What do you need to do to make Seals Creek all that God has envisioned it to be? I'm an, I'm an observer. I see everything. I was in the military 26 years. I don't miss nothing. Situation awareness, right? I see it all. I don't say nothing. I commit it to prayer. But all I'm saying is, are you ready to get in alignment with the assignment? It's time out for somebody else's job. It's time out for somebody else to do it. It's time out for somebody else to say it. You don't mind if I walk, do you? Because God is holding us all accountable for our own assignment. I'm not in charge of yours, and you ain't in charge of mine. But if I fail to do it, how many lives are affected as a result? If you fail to do it, how many lives are affected as a result? God is just asking you to listen to him, to lean in to what he is saying, and then take a leap into action. Pastor, I saw a vision that it was standing room only in here. It was a couple of weeks ago. People were around the walls. But that's not going to happen until you get in alignment with the assignment. We're not just reaching those who we see. We're not just reaching those who come every Sunday. We ask our neighbor, you want to come to church with me? And it's not about just church. Because Jesus did all his work outside of a building. Never had a building. He preached from a boat. He preached from the side of a hill. He preached walking down the dirty road. So it's not about a building. But if you bring them in, then we can be equipped to go out and bring even more. What is your purpose? Why are you here? It's not about your age. Don't get it twisted. It's not. He called Moses when he was 80 to lead the people in the, through the wilderness. So it's not about your age. Mm -mm. It's not about you being too young. Mm -mm. God wants to know, will you get an alignment for the assignment. This is not Pastor Michelle. You can be mad at me all day long because I don't care. I'm not moved by people's opinions or their feelings because I know what I've been put in the earth to do. But do you? And will you take the leap? I'm finished. If the Lord has said anything to you today, Consider this. How pleased is God with your answer? How pleased is he with your response? 
And if you're fine with it, go with it. But don't get mad when things don't line up the way you want them to. Because the best answer is the one that aligns with his will. The best answer aligns with his purpose. I'm finished. Can we just stand, those of you who can? And we're just going to make a declaration as a whole body. Put your hands on your chest and say, today, I'm getting an alignment with my assignment. Today, I'm going to listen. Today, I'm going to lean in. Today, I'm going to leap to action. Father, by your word, help me to do it. In Jesus' name. The doors of the church are open. I don't see any new people in here. But that doesn't mean we aren't here because I always am here at the back. If this word has touched you in any way and you want prayer, I can pray with you after service so we can pray right here. Whether you need to know Jesus, I'm here to pray with you. Whether you want to be realigned, I'm here to pray with you. Whether you want to say, God, I'm sorry, and help me to align my life with your will, I'm here to pray with you. Is there one? Okay. The doors of the church are open. If you would like to become a member of Seals Creek, Pastor and First Lady would love to have you become a part of this great family that's on the rise. Because what? The creek is rising. <laughs> ah, because it's in alignment. Amen. If there's not one, let us look to the Lord. You may be seated. You stay right there. You may be seated. Let us pray. Can we reach our hands towards this evangelist and this prophet? Reach our hands. Father in heaven, we thank you for the anointing that you poured out through this woman of God. Thank you, Father God, for anointing her for a time such as this. Father God, everything that she poured out unto us, fill her back up with it fourfold, Father God. Thank you for allowing her to speak through the Holy Spirit, Father God. Father God, put a hedge of protection around her. Father God, guide her steps wherever she may go. Father God, continue to open her eyes and give her vision so she can see what you have called her to see in a way she's been called to see it. Father God, give her the strength to do what you've called her to do, Father God. Dip her down in wisdom's well and pull her back up, Father God, to continue to live the life you've called her to live, Father God. We ask these many blessings to be bestowed upon her. In your son Jesus Christ's name we pray. We all say together. Amen. God bless you. 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 Have we not been blessed? Amen. Pastor Michelle, Pastor Michelle, honey, what a word, what a word, you will be back, you will be back, <laughs> um, I don't know about you, but my soul was definitely fed this morning, Pastor Michelle brought the word, and I hope that you received everything that she dropped on our soul and our spirits, definitely brought words of wisdom, so if you can come up at this time. We have a token, um, as Dr. Menica said, your presence 
has been amazing, your spirit. So we are so glad that you just decided to stop over by Little Seals Creek and you keep coming back. It's Robert's fault. Well, thank you, Mr. Robert. And she just keep coming back. Um, and she brings people with her. So um, on behalf of the women of Seals Creek, we just wanted to give you a little token. We know that we can pay you what you are worth, but this is a little token of love for saying yes. And we thoroughly appreciate all that you did. Your message was, honey, I'm on the high, okay? And I'm leaning, sis, okay? I'm leaning all week. Um, so we just want to say thank you, thank you, thank you. Um, Pastor, thank you for allowing us to ask Pastor Michelle because we do understand this space is sacred. And not everybody is welcome in this space. Amen. And you got to be mindful of who you do let speak to your spirit. So we thank you for the words. And we hope that you um, enjoy this gift and these beautiful flowers um, to adorn your house. Um, and think of Seals Creek, okay? Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Robert. It's your fault. <laughs> um, and also, we have two special birthdays today, just in case anybody didn't know. Um, Miss Shilla, that's why I didn't purposely say happy birthday to you this morning, because I wanted to say it publicly, honey. So we have two birthday twins today, Miss Sheila Pinkston and Miss Sonya Clyburn. So, Jay, Ben, can we sing them happy birthday? you from your Seals Creek family. Mwah, mwah. Um, Pastor, I now lead it to you for any remarks that you may have, um, and then you can close us out and with the benediction. To give God some praise, Seals Creek. To give God some praise, Seals Creek. She said, are you listening? Are you leaning? And are you leaping? Listening, leaning, and leaping. We thank God for this woman of God. Amen. 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 We thank God. Can we can we give some love to our two Women's Day coordinators? Amen. Will you stand up, Sister Stephanie and Sister Galanda? Amen. We thank God for you. We thank God for you. Amen. We had a presentation on on yesterday. Amen. The women had a, a breakfast downstairs and we had a a, a lively and, and learning field presentation by our own uh, Dr. Minica Brady. Can you please stand up and let everybody see you as well? Amen. Amen. I also want to thank the men who showed up early. Amen. On yesterday who cooked and stayed here yesterday throughout the funeral. Um, thank you all who are here to support. We had a very large crowd here on yesterday. Um, thank you, Seals Creek, for being very hospitable to the McNeely family. We thank you. We thank you. We sure will be sure to get a card or whatever they may be giving. But as a part of the McNeely family, I want to say thank you for everything that you did on yesterday on behalf of our lost loved one and this, this, a member of this church, Brother Charlie McNeely. Amen. Amen. Um, before we dismiss, we will, Brother Jeff will be leading a, a, a brief members meeting after service. Um, he announced that on last week. So please govern yourselves accordingly to that. Are there any other announcements? Any other announcements? If there be none, let us go to God for the benediction. Now unto him who is able to present us spots before his throne with exceeding joy. So only wise God, our Savior, be glory, majesty, dominion, and power, both henceforth now and forevermore. And we sing together.